Free range goat herding. It's a logistical nightmare. I'm out with 20 goats today, including new mother Jessie, a newborn doling, Sassy, who was named the other day. She's back at the house with Toon. So here's Jessie here. She's having a much needed break from her little un, and uh, she's eating like a horse. Um, we're free ranging, which uh, is a little bit fraught with danger because any of you that have kept goats before, even though they're a friendly bunch, they can be a little bit naughty from time to time. So my intentions today are not to leave them around the lake because although there looks like plenty of food around here on the left, it's not a lot and you don't want your goats walking too far from getting their food. So behind Jesse here, it's like a cross between Narnia and Jumanji in there. It is serious, serious undergrowth. And for the past two to three weeks, I've been able to push the goats through there. And uh, they've made incredible progress. So I'm gonna get them into there, uh, and then we'll, we'll switch over to a uh, herd cam, and we'll see if we can get some footage of them doing their stuff, and uh, show you just how efficient they are at clearing some really rough ground for us. Here's BB, she's next to give birth, hopefully. Just use my trusty naughty goat bag stick just to get them in the undergrowth a little bit. Off you go, Tumnus, get your dirty nads in there, mate. Here comes naughty Hoover. You think she's last, but she's not. There's two more. Wouldn't you know it, Scape. Owenetta. Coffee's coming like a bloody greyhound. She'll be beating her mum in a minute. Wait till she pops up. There she is. And last but not least, Donna, aka Treacle. That's about as quick as she moves. Come on, Donna. Let's get you in there. Right, the herd has started to move in there. Go on, Jesse, don't make me tell you twice. And we're in. The bit that I'm walking across now, you couldn't walk through before. It was as thick as anything. So because we've dropped down now behind the lake, and this is the, probably one of the, the last remaining low bits on the farm now, it really does hold the heat in here. There's a few of you guys that are contemplating going into farming goats in Thailand. And uh, obviously <laughs> me and Toon would highly recommend it. We think it's, uh, it's a great venture, enjoyable, and hopefully we can, we can turn a few quid doing it as well. Uh, but when you get your goats, I wouldn't recommend that you just open the gate and let them go for it, free ranging like this. Uh, it won't go well. You need to build up a bit of a rapport with the goats. It certainly helps when they they start recognising the name when you're shouting at them. Uh, but there are a few things that you need to have with you. So I'm just going to run through those with you while these are getting their heads down and starting to eat. There's Scape over there. He's on a little little mountain. So just bear in mind, you know, I'm a professional goat herder. I've been doing it for a good four months now. Uh, but here's my top tip. Lee's top tips to successful goat herding. Get yourself this. This is the most important thing. Your goat naughty stick. So this is patented by Toon. Uh, and all you do is you, you tie a bag on the end of it. So that's brilliant for uh, changing direction of a, no, of a naughty goat. They don't always listen, so you might have to accompany it with a very loud shout or two. A lot of you have noticed that I've got a new, very posh hat. That's still back at the house, so well, why is he wearing this old bit of tat then? My Texican that's fallen to pieces. Well, um, you need a big wide rim when you're out and about. I'll be out here for about two, three hours today. So um, you've got to keep the sun off you as much as possible. If, you, if your hat hasn't got a very broad rim on it, then uh, just the, the sun on your neck and your show, shoulders, and when you've got a big hooter like mine, you'll, you'll end up looking like Rudolph. So get yourself one with a nice wide brim and you'll be good to go. Uh, the next thing, I've got very sensitive eyes, so uh, a pair of shades are good. Also, when you're looking for fish in your lake, 
Uh, this cuts out the glare so you can see about a foot under the surface. Oh, they've gone already. I need to catch up. Hey! Come on, Dangmo. They do like a road. Hey! Hey! Just pop your stick on the opposite side to where they want to go. Come on. You don't have to worry about stragglers. They, uh, they don't like being alone. I mean, Geraldine's a pretty slow goat, but if you put food in front of her, if it hasn't ran out, she doesn't really like to move on. But again, when uh, everyone's out of eyesight or earshot, you'll start, uh, you'll start to hear her hooting, going <laughs> and panicking that she's been left all alone. And uh, she'll soon catch up in her, in her own time. Right, the back on track, so where was I? So I've done my glasses. Uh, the next thing is, my good wife has created me cutting edge I know it looks good as well. Made to measure a man bag. So I'm going to show you what's, what's in here. It's like Father Christmas, but I haven't wrapped up my presents. A pair of gloves. I'll show you why in a bit. It's not for keeping warm, bloody hell. Uh, but when I get into a bit of trouble, the old Samsung J1, still going strong. If it all goes horribly wrong, me inhaler. What else? It's never end, isn't it? And your bottle of electrolytes. Uh, that looks an incredible amount. I've only been out here 10 minutes. So I'm going to have a sip on this already. This is probably about, last me about two hours tops. Okay, so uh, incredibly important. Don't just take water out, guys. If you haven't got a big container like this, bring out two small bottles, uh, one with water, one with electrolytes, and have a sip of both. Don't leave it too long before you have a drink. They say if you wait till you're, you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated, so oh, I'm thirsty. What I have noticed when you work in, in full full heat in Thailand, a lot, a lot of people think you're bonkers, but you, you, you've got to get your goats out. I know there's a lot of goat farmers that keep their goats in, or they'll just let them out uh, late afternoon, early evening. But that's not me. I like to have a, a really good balanced diet, and your goat will find the food that they really, really want. They're looking for the really dark green, leafy, crawling weeds that sort of thing and uh, just giving them bits of corn and grass it's you're not really giving them a good balanced diet with that okay and the last thing that I've got with me and it's nothing to do with goat herd and it's to give me something to do um, because although you do clock up a fair few kilometers because they do stay very very mobile uh, a goat herd um, sometimes you stood there for like 10 minutes with chuff all to do so I've got my shank haven't I and if I just show you around here, some of the areas are quite thick and the goats don't particularly like going through them. So an area like this, this, this sort of weed, they're not really interested in. Okay? Goats don't eat everything. And uh, if you start chopping them off down the bottom, then the next time they come through, then they'll start walking through these areas. and then they'll eat the grass that's on the ground and climbing weeds. So I'll just do that as I'm going around. And uh, it's a good bit of exercise. You'll see this weed here, this grass here. They're not really keen on this. So that'll be one of the last things that are gonna be cleaned out here. Right, they are about 80 yards that way. So I'm gonna set off again. The first few times I did this, it, um, it was a little bit, what could we say? Um, not nerve-wracking, but you're constantly on pins because you're just worried. I'm like, oh, I can't count 20. 
Uh, I've lost one. Um, or has, has, has one got on someone else's land and eating their crops? But at the moment, no one else is really growing anything. So if they do make a break for it, it's not like they're going to devastate someone's crop. Uh, I notice I've, uh, I'm still wearing flip-flops. A lot of you are quite surprised with that. I mean, you look how thick the undergrowth is. Uh, and when I first used to start coming out here, hang on, they made a break for it again. Uh, I was paranoid that I was going to get um, bitten by a snake at any second and uh, it did take a lot of enjoyment out of walking around the farm. It's just something you get used to, your eyesight gets a little bit keener, you tend to spot things um, a little bit earlier. Hey! Right, let's see the blue bag in the naughty stick in action, eh? They just stick it the way that they want to go. power of blue plastic, eh? Most of the time it gets burnt in Thailand, but we've got a use for it, so send all your blue bags to us. No, please don't. So now it's quite enjoyable for me. So it's good exercise. I can do, I can do a little bit of weeding. I mean, look at the state of the place. So you, you see we've got all our eucalyptus here. Uh, I used to plough in between. But as soon as we got the goats, I just thought, well, no, let's just let it all grow. And uh, if they clear land as well as they reckon they do, then uh, it's all free pasture for them. And it is indeed. Go on, Ruby. But they love it. They do love it. And I'll tell you what, keeping goats like this, you don't half learn about them a lot quicker, individually and, and as a herd. Who's the boss? Who's, uh, who's the picky eater? Who's the big eater? Who's brave? Who likes going through the long, tall stuff? You've got Slim here. Well, she's not so slim now. She's very headstrong. She'll just go off. She doesn't like to eat with the, uh, the, the rest of the herd. So you'll never see her in the middle of there. She'll always be ahead or to the side or, or to the back. PJ there, she's the most skittish. So if someone goes past, and I don't know why people like doing this to goats and not cows and sheep, but they like to blow their horns and make goat noises. And uh, that's enough to set PJ off. She bears be and legs it. And of course, then you get a tsunami of goats running through your farm. And believe you me, if you're not on top of it in the blink of an eye they're gone so you're running like bloody forest gump after after 20 goats in about 40 degrees and it's uh well i'll struggle i tell you what i do find frustrating watching goats eat though is look at all this food here they love this climbing weed they'll take two or three mouthfuls and then carry on browsing somewhere else and i just say why don't you just stay put and get a good feed now, there's a couple of reasons. One, they, uh, they just don't like feeding with their head down. They, they like feeding on stuff that's, you know, just at their, their natural head height. So climbing weed is obviously, unless it's climbing, it's quite low down. And it's getting trodden on. And goats don't like eating anything that's been trodden on, either by you or by another goat. They also don't like eating anything that's been sniffed or nibbled or licked by another goat. They'll leave that for a couple of days until the scent's gone and then they'll have it next time. So the, the good thing is though, they don't actually decimate one particular area. I suppose if you put that temporary, um, I think it's Premier fencing or Premier One fencing, like temporary electrical fencing, that looks brilliant stuff. I know it's quite expensive, uh, but if you want to totally clear some areas, Who's going through that bit there? Someone small. Is that scape? Yeah, there he is. Good lad. Yeah, if you wanted to clear one particular area very thoroughly, then you would, you'd keep them penned up in a very small area for that. But I don't know. I just like being out and about. and stops me getting bored. It certainly stops them getting bored. Some people have been concerned, Lee, you know, you've, you've, you've got goats going through tall stuff. Are you not concerned about snakes? Well, goats have been 
contact with snakes uh, since the start of time, since they've been on this earth. So it's something that's uh, built into them. They're in incredibly good eyesight. That's why they say you can never sneak up on a goat. They've almost got 360 degrees. If you ever want to sneak up on a goat, you've got a parachute in, come from above, and uh, that's your best chance. So no, we haven't had any to-dos with uh, snakes. I've seen uh, a couple while I've been out. I mean, I'm out here every single day for a few hours. So uh, I dare say there's absolutely hundreds around me. They're probably like rats in the UK. You're never more than two meters away from a snake. But as long as you don't run, as long as the goats don't run, you're all right. The, the snakes will hear you before you even see them. It is a danger, I know, but it's not something um, to really concern yourself about with as much, say, as a, a wild dog. If someone had a dog round here that was just let off, let off on the loose and uh, one of the little ones wasn't near the herd, then, yeah, I'll, I'd be more concerned about a dog than a snake. Obviously, there's lots of snakes in Thailand that could kill a goat, uh, certainly kill the small goat, the young goats. But you see this grass that Slim's getting into now? They love this stuff, but they only pick the ends. I'll just show you a bit. You'll see here, they've, they've, they've taken, sometimes it doesn't look like they're eating much, but they are. So, just let me get that, girl. You can have it after. So they'll eat that bit off the top that she's looking at, she wants that. But you got how many acres to eat and you look at mine, because it smells of me now. So that particular grass, once the end has been nipped off, it won't die, it will just start shooting somewhere else. I know it's still the dry season, but for them to make this much headway in less than a month, I think that's brilliant. And it's only 20 goats. When we first started out, I just thought, geez, we're going to need about 500 goats to get on top of all this. No chance. Absolutely no chance. I know it's the dry season and uh, stuff has pretty much stopped growing. We had a little bit of a spurt last week because we had three drops of rain. But really, I'd still class this as a dry season, a prolonged, very long dry season. This is why they're decimating it so much. Once the rains come for real, if they ever do, then 20 won't be able to keep up. But by that time, of course, uh, the herd, the ranks of the herd should be swelled substantially. And we're gonna try and get well over 100. The whole of the farm boundary is gonna get fenced off. That's first and foremost. We were gonna do se uh, separate areas, but I said to Ter, I said, well, because we've had some naughty people, and it does appear, I've got a dip, I've got to be careful how I phrase this. It does appear that there's a discrepancy between uh, what is our boundaries and other people's boundaries. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the most diplomatic way of saying it. Uh, so we've got the mayor and uh, a couple of other officials coming to measure up over the next day or two. And hopefully we can get a post or two put in uh, and then run a line from corner to corner uh, and and then we can we can use that for our our boundary fencing. Then we can start separating areas off. So there so will be a separate area for uh, newly born kids, young kids, mothers, and young mums, where they've come off giving milk to their kids, but you still want to give them another month or two break before a uh, bullseye has his wicked way with them. So there are, there are going to be separate areas. The fencing that we use, a goat could get over it quite easily. Bullseye could probably just ram straight through it as well. But as long as there's food for these animals, they don't seem bothered at all trying to, trying to defeat the fencing. Even when it's all fenced off on the outside, we wouldn't leave them out here on their own anyway. Say so a dog can jump a bloody fence, so can people. So can a goat, so uh, no, it's not like once it's all fenced, that's it, just open the uh, goat house door and and let them go for the day. You've got to keep an eye on them. Oh, a little bit of shade, look at that. Right, I'm going to take five minutes and have a drink. Whoo! Just behind me over there, in there, a 
that's all the cassava sticks. So our builder who's uh, locking together the goat house, he's renting the land behind here, 10 rye, and he's just about to grow the cassava. And uh, he was hopefully waiting for one more downpour uh, and then get a tractor in there, rent a tractor for a day and pop it all in with a, a team of helpers. But uh, he's not here today, so I'm not sure. Right, let's get your fluids in, you boy. Quite happy with the eucalyptus growth. We've never fed these, we've never watered these. We just popped them in last year and I think it was like a month before the end of the wet season. And uh, just about everyone survived is we should end up with grass everywhere. Uh, the root systems of grasses are quite robust, so once all the other weeds are, are cleared, then the grasses should take over. I think I was saying before though, goats shouldn't be fed solely on grass, so we're going to make sure that they've got plenty of other stuff. So we're going to be growing a lot of gatin. Also when the rains come, it'll be growing in the wild, but we've, uh, the ones that we've been collecting We've also collect some seed pods as well. We've got, no joke, we must have about 50,000 seed ready to go in. So we'll grow those in areas where the goats can't nibble them and uh, they can grow as big as your eucalyptus and they grow very, very fast. The good thing about the gatin is if you grow it on your land, it's a legume, so it does fix the nitrogen in your soil. Um, and as well as the goats liking the leaves and the seeds and the flower heads, they also like the bark on it. The good thing about gatin is once the goats have finished nibbling on the, the bark and stripping it all off the main pieces of wood, you can, it's then ready to make your biochar. Just a couple of days dry and it's good to go. So this is pretty much untouched here, but you can see through here a couple of them have started to walk through. And so they do like a little road system. So once one goat's been through, then a few of them will start going through there and using it as a communal track. There she is, at the back again. She got a few months yet before she gives birth. Someone was asking how many goats and how many female, how many are females. At the moment, we're up to 21 in the herd. 18 of which are female, that is definitely not a female. He's no trouble at all now. Certainly when he's uh, down here, if we're walking around the lake where there's not a lot of food, if we're walking along the, the track along the top, then that's when he comes up and, and wants a scratch, so but no issues here. I don't know how long they've been in here now. 20, 25 minutes. They've not stopped eating. Whereas if they're going around the lake, it's a mouthful, then walk 10 yards, another mouthful. It's not as anywhere near as efficient. And of course, you know, they're a big animal. They're using lots of energy walking around. Whereas here, they're just continuously eating. And when they do move, they're still moving while they're eating. They'll take a big mouthful of food and walk to the next thing. They'll soon tell you when they've had enough. They'll start becoming really picky what they want to eat. And they'll start walking more. More walking, less eating. And they'll, they'll push towards the lake. They know where to go. And they're basically telling you, come on Lee, let's get back. You look knackered, mate, and uh, it's our siesta time. I'm not knackered today. I haven't done any chopping hardly. In the future, once the fencing's up, Although we'll be spending just as much time with them, you haven't got to be so uh, close up and personal with them because you know that they, uh, there's, a, there's a good chance that they can't get out. So as long as you can keep the, the herd in view, then you can get on with your other stuff. Go on Tangma, you can get through. When we're having the lake dug, bloody hell. I was out for a whole day about four or five days on the trot. I was a little bit fatigued, but loved it. But incredibly enjoyable. Not because I could watch the lake being dug, but just spending some time with this lot. They are a right old giggle. And Tang Mo, she comes up for her strokes once she starts getting a bit full. Occasionally see Scape trying to 
slip a sneaky one in with the ladies. Oh, coffee, keep up. She's growing well now. You see, she's the same height as Tangmo, and Tangmo's two months older than her. This is why I was, uh, did a video about maybe the possibility of thinning the herd and in the future being very selective which ones we keep. And uh, Tangmo and Ruby, you know, for, for coffee to be the same height as them now, that's some going. And uh, I don't think it's just because coffee's growing very quickly. I just think Ruby and Tangmo are a little bit behind the drag curve. But there's a good weight to them when you pick them up. There's little Ruby there. Uh, when I mentioned to Toon, you know, we should only keep the best of the best. And she was like, well, they're girls, they can breed. We just eat all the ones that they breed. I thought, well, it's not a bad idea, is it? So keep eating, girl. Still got to be a few good burgers in that. Here's another weed that they have shown zero interest in, this bush here. It's quite a pungent smell, so I'm pretty sure that that's got something to do with it. So I'm going to cut this down and a little bit of the long grass. And uh, by which time they'll have moved on, they'll need to catch them up. <laughs> long grass here it looks almost like a bamboo and it's as hard as that I've got a bit of a scary story about it if you just look at it there that is rock hard that's what I've just been trying to cut through and there's uh, something called napier weed which is very very similar to this but the goats actually like it and it's being grown or was being grown at a farm opposite ours but as with so many farms around us this year crops have failed and the farmer who was renting the land he just left it all in there and then the next people that have come along to rent it just put a tractor straight in so the whole crop just just left the dead really um there were still some good bits in there so Toon and I went in there so Toon and I went in there we'd, we'd asked the farmer if it was all right the new farmer they said crack on. We went in there and we were grabbing ourselves a load of the roots to transplant over to here. And uh, Toon lost her footing because so it had just been ploughed there. And uh, it looked like the tractor had cut one of the roots, or one of the stems rather, and it went straight into Toon's Toon's leg by well, over an inch, it was proper, proper deep. We had a gusher, and uh, I had to do my Dr. Kildare impression and give her a piggyback out of there to safety, and uh, patched her up. But she's, uh, she's bruised, thankfully there's no infection. Well, she's up to date with her tetanus anyway, but all right, I think they're full. A little bit shorter today, about an hour and a half. I don't mind that. What will happen now is they'll they'll work their way. Oh, I've got a new pointing stick. They'll work their way round here to about where the access road is there, and then they'll drop down where the eucalyptus, the palms, and the bamboos are, and they'll go in there. They've got some nice climbing weed that they like there. And Naughty Hoover, I've discovered she likes our eucalyptus leaves, so this then doubles up as a scaring spear. And you just launch it, because they, they spread out quite a lot over there. And I can't run around like I used to, so it's just a quick, oi! And launch my blue spear. And, uh, well, basically just ignore me till I walk over there and pick my spear up. Hey-ho, look at that, she's over there. Slim, 
Every time it's you. Come on. It's like being at home with two. One word from me and she just does as she wants anyway. Whatever. I'll see you back at the house then. There's their new luxury accommodation coming on a treat over there. It's going to be special, that is. It's hard to say what a favourite is of the goats because they're all different. But what I've noticed, they don't eat one particular thing for very long. Like they'll be noshing on the banana branches here, just the fleshy bits. And they'll eat a lot of that. But then you've got like Yo Yo there. She'll take a big bit and she's off somewhere else. She's off to get a climbing weed now. That's her favourite. Tim, he didn't know what he's doing anyway. Clueless, that boy. Brownie, she's off. Bloody naughty goat, that is. Where she's heading off now is, she does this every bloody time. Wherever we have a fire, we burn off a little bit of rubbish that we can't recycle. She goes for a sniff in there, see if there's anything that she can... She can have a bloody bin dipping goat. Whoa, that is strong wind. I don't mind because it's cooling me down a bit. Mind you, I've got my new microphone on. I've been trying it for the last couple of videos. I nearly launched it in the bin, if I'm honest. There's two settings on it. One I sound like Metal Mickey, and the other one I sound like Silas Greenback. So uh, I've had a fiddle with it. If it doesn't work this time, it's getting binned. Poxy thing. So if the audio is rubbish, I've just relied on the GoPro audio again. To say it's infuriating is an understatement. You get that spiky weed down you yo yo. I don't want to be cutting that. Hey! Hoover! You get the spear! Alright. Let's put it to the test. Is the spear of destiny? Just launch it to her right, see if she jumps. Okay. Impressive throw, eh, boys? It's a show of the uh, last poacher we caught on the farm. Uh, he's in with the crayfish now. Toon got him in the Swede with a uh, catapult and ball bearing. You get stuck in bullseye, you've got to keep your strength up, mate. Right, I need to be heading back to the house. I've already had my breakfast, so I don't know whether I qualify for second breakfast. I've not really been out long enough. I might have another brew. Uh, another top tip before you come out, goat herding. You might be out for a long, long time. So uh, make sure that you've been for a number two before you leave the house, because if the goats aren't full, you can't leave them and they won't want to come back so make sure you don't get caught short guys that's probably Lee's top tip have a dump before you go goat herd so we've got a few goats so we think about getting a few goats give it a go it's a bit of a giggle uh, you might lose a few pounds doing it and um, just make sure you got one of Toon's bag sticks with you nothing can go wrong then ta-da for now